trustees of Floresville Independent School District. Let the record show we have a quorum and that uh, Mr. Bippert is absent. Uh, item B, we'll go to the prayer. Ms. Cope, if you will lead us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for those who are gathered here. I ask, Lord, for your blessings upon this district, upon our staff, upon our administration, and especially upon our children as we begin our new school year. May you be with us throughout this entire year, Lord. Bless us and continue to give us direction and your wisdom. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. 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 Of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag, I pledge allegiance to the Texas one state, under God, one and indivisible. I do community of character work based. Mr. Robbie, our student that we were going to uh, award that to is sick tonight. He has a stomach bag, so I'll call and pause, so we'll reschedule that for next time. Okay. Thank you. Are there any public comments on the No. Okay, then we'll move to item four, consent agenda. by Ms. Payne and a second by Mr. Muth to uh, approve the consent agenda as presented. Any discussion? All in favor? Four of them. Item five, a report student handbooks. Ms. Bates? We do use the, uh, the TASB student handbook as a, as a model, and so our uh, campus administrators have met and uh, TASB makes sure that we're up to date on all of the legal issues, and then um, they go through and make modifications based on their campuses. So with that, I'm gonna let the principals come up and share those small changes with you. Good evening. We're excited to share both North and South Elementary Campus Handbook changes with you tonight. We've continued to collaborate to ensure changes to the handbooks are identical for both campuses. On page 27, we have added the official attendance time for pre-K. On pages 37 and 38, we added a cell phone policy so that we would align with our middle school campus. Page 42 is a handbook. Content grading guidelines were updated for reading, language arts, and social studies. On page 67, we added the information regarding partial absences and unexcused absences for the elementary. This was something we started in January of last year, um, sent that out to parents, but just updated it this year in the handbook. And last, on page 68 of the student handbook, a uh, change was we updated information regarding school-sponsored trips and chaperone background checks now being done through the Raptor ID system. Uh, thank you, board members, for your support of our campuses and in guiding our district on a path to ensure a prosperous life for our students. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Yes, sir. Um, most of the changes in the middle school handbook uh, came from the TASB model, um, some formatting and just a few wording changes. Um, beginning on page uh, 15 with some of the changes that we made, uh, we removed Spanish from our 8th uh, grade course selection elective list and added the AVID course that we're now offering. Um, TASB had some changes in um, their terminology in, in the bullying section on page 17, we just updated that. Same thing for page 22 with the credit by exam, Tyree did make some um, recommendations for that, as well as the distance learning on 25 and 30. Um, there were some new food allergy um, guidelines that actually came out right as we did handbooks last year, and our handbook used to say when ready, and then we approved some new policy for that. 
So on page 36, we added that policy. Page 42, um, there were some changes in um, the way we referenced uh, for parents to bring medication to school and that we recommended that um, that come from parents that they didn't send students with medication because that was not in compliance with our um, student code of conduct. And we added some forms that's, uh, that we want parents to fill out that's outlined on pages 42 and 43. Um, there was some references on page 46 um, from the TASB model. Um, they had moved some, some of those items to another section under standardized testing, as well as removing the 15% requirement for the EOC exams. Um, that came out of ours as well because of the algebra assessment. On um, page 50, we updated um, student lunch prices as Sodexo changed their, um, their lunch prices. I know you've heard about that before. In your packet, it noted we made a change on page 55, but I apologize, that was actually left there from a previous year, um, and the editing that didn't get pulled off. Um, that change isn't even there. It hasn't been there for a couple of years. And um, then in page 67, um, We've asked, um, Mrs. Bates asked that at the middle school and the high school that we add some extracurricular guidelines and appendix to our handbook. So that appendix four has been added um, to address those uh, guidelines. Do you have any questions about the middle school handbook? <coughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, members of the board. As for the other campus, FHS has updated its handbook to reflect uh, legislative changes that have recently happened. I'd like to just highlight a couple of things that might be of interest to you. On page 12 in our handbook, uh, titled Accommodations for Children of Military Families, will not allow with proper notification, proper documentation, no more than five excused absences per year for a parent, step parent, or legal guardian that has been called to active duty, is on leave, or has been, on the, been at deployment for at least four months. On page 23, in regard to class rank, we are aligned now with board policy in regards to student handbook. There have been no major change. There are no changes in how we calculate the class rank. It's just that the wording was a little, spelled out a little bit differently in each one of these documents. On page 31 on the dress code, we included leggings or yoga pants. On um, page 40, in regards to graduation requirements, it now reflects house, house bill in regards to EOC. Basically, the kids only have to be successful on five exams, that being biology, algebra one, ELA 1, Reading Writing, ELA 2, Reading Writing, and U.S. History. On page 41, in regards to transcript, it now delineates a process for requesting a transcript for a student, an official transcript. On page 43, in regards to tobacco, it now includes electronic cigarettes. And on page, page 49, in regards to prom, no guest attendance that is 21 or over. So, can I answer any questions in regards to this? Okay, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. We still have two pages. <laughs> Actually, one page front and back. Uh, nothing has changed in the last 10 years on this. Basically, the dates, all the other districts have uh, they looked at this to approve this as well. It's in addition to the various districts, student code of conduct. But uh, do you have any questions about anything? Very good, thanks. Ms. Chode, second by Ms. Tanya to approve the 2013-2014 FISD Student Code of Conduct as presented by the administration. Any further discussion? All in favor? Board. Uh, item seven, report state assessment for Mr. Payne. How are y'all doing today? Uh, 
if you don't have a handout, you can look on to the uh, uh, screen right here. But you should have a handout that looks like this. And then one that looks like this that has a new state accountability. Uh, as you know, the state, ability has, the state accountability has changed. Um, this year, you're either going to be met standard or needs improvement. Um, and this one right here, this one, there will be a lot more detail in October or November when we do it for the board that, that details each campus. This just has the stuff for South Elementary. Um, and what I'm going to use, I'm going to use this to explain what's in here. So if you look at this one first, you'll notice that um, it has met standard, which every one of our campuses in the district met standard. And uh, over on the top right, it has distinction designation. Um, this is kind of similar to what the goal performance used to be in the tax test. It's things that you do very well. Um, and there are three areas that you can get distinction. Actually, um, if you'll turn the page down to the To the, to the next one, it talks about ELA, reading ELA. There are, if you'll notice, for South Elementary, it says one of four. Okay, there are four areas in ELA that you can get uh, a distinction. In high school, there's seven. So in middle school, I believe there's is it three or is it four? Uh, in math, there's three. So it, it's different for each level of campus um, and you can see just look at attendance it says 96 percent and we're in q4 that's four thousand four so in that one we're in the we're in the bottom four or the bottom ten of our subgroup all right and if you'll go to the very last page in south elementary you'll see a this it'll look like this right here and it, that shows that the 40 schools Go one more. All the way to the, right there. Uh, so this, these are the 40 schools that South Elementary is compared to. So instead of being compared to the whole state, you are now um, compared to just 40 schools that are like you in size, in demographics, and economically disadvantaged. So you're now, you are now comparing apples to apples, in other words. You, these schools are your size, they have your makeup, economically and uh, in ethnicity, okay? So in, to be in quartile one, you have to be in the top 10. If you're in quartile two, you're 10 to 20, and so forth and so on. And the, uh, the distinction that the South Elementary earned was they were in the top 10 in uh, student progress. And that means how students went from, from one year to the next. There are four indexes right now, or indices, however you want to say. The first one is just straight student achievement. How did we, we took all these tests, we passed a certain amount, that's your percentage of student achievement. The second one is student progress. How a student progress from one year to the next, and that's all kids. The third one, it takes your high risk areas. How are your high risk areas improved? Your economically disadvantaged kids will always be a part of that, and then your two lowest performing ethnicity groups, and it, it's different for each campus. And uh, you have to have at least 25 students in that sub box for it to even count. All right? Um, so South Elementary was number two out of their 40. Now that's very important. It's not, they're not number two in the state. They're number two with the people that they're compared to. And this could change next year because if your demographics change, if your free and reduced lunches change, I mean, just if any part of that changes, you can be in a different subgroup. Okay, that's very important to understand. Also, um, they had to get 45, a score of 45 
North Elementary had to be a, above a score of 48, I believe. So in the same district, on two different campuses, they had to have different scores to be in the top 10. North Elementary was in, I think they were number six out of 40. So they got a distinction in that too. So if you'll, from that, if you'll go to this page, where it says, New State Accountability, it says distinction. This table talks about the areas for each campus, like every campus met standards, the top 25% comparable school, the district, there's, they don't have that category for district. Um, and North and South both received a distinction in that. Uh, our high school and middle school, that just means they weren't in the top 10 out of their 40 schools. I know of a district that uh, in their student achievement scored a 91 out of 100. And they were one of the highest ones in, in their area, but they got needs improvement because they were in the bottom 10 of the schools they were compared to. And it's not by classification. I mean, you can have a uh, our elementary will go against schools that, are, that may have uh, three or four or five thousand in their high school because they have so many elementaries at the lower level. So it's, uh, it's truly comparing apples to apples. This is really, to me, a good thing because you really know where you compare to, to schools that are like you. Um, and our, our high school got distinctions in reading ELA and mathematics, which, like, like I said before, the high school had to get four out of seven in order to do so. Uh, and the other ones, because there's fewer categories for them, you had to get uh, two out of four in order, 50% is generally what they're asking you to do. Um, now, do you have any questions over the distinctions part of it? That, that's kind of the gold star part. And how many again do the elementary have to meet the total distinctions? There's, there's not a limit on the amount of distinctions that, that you, that you, just, you can get as many as three. Three, okay. Yes, ma'am. And that's, that's in each campus, okay. except the district. The district, uh, there's not distinctions yet for this. And I know you've probably heard about that, that the state is going to an A, B, C, D. Mm -hmm. That'll be at the, either, probably in 15, 16, whenever all the recommended standards come into play. Okay, if you'll go back to this one just for a second now. On the bottom right, you see, well, on, you see campus demographics too. That kind of tells you where your, who your campus will compare to. But on the bottom right, you see a thing called the system safeguards. And there are, they put the system safeguards in four categories. Their performance rates and uh, participation rates graduation rates, and limits on alternate assessments. That's like you'll have students that take modified EOC or modified <coughs> or, uh, you know, special education populations or alternate. And you can only have 3% total that can take alternate tests, 1% uh, all, excuse me, 3% total that can take either modified or alternate. 2% modified and 1% can take off. All right, so that's what, that's what that means. Uh, and our safeguards, the participation had to be above 95%. If you met, if you were all above 95%, then you were, you got a Y, and a Y means you met it. Um, and then on graduation, now this is a, this is kind of different. The federal, because this also has to do, this is state accountability and federal accountability. Federal accountability had to be 78% across the board in order to meet the system safeguard. The state is 75%. And they're still in negotiations on how that's going to look on our final report card. Um, and then we met every system safeguard in, in participation, graduation, and uh, special assessments. 
there are some in the performance rates that we did not meet. Uh, I just want to point those out to you uh, because I, you know, we want to be transparent in everything we do. Um, in economically disadvantaged in writing, as a district, we were below 50%. We don't know exactly what those percentages are yet. And we were below it in special education in writing as well. And as a district, you'll notice that in ELL, in reading, we were below 50%. And if you notice, in ELL, there, was, there is no other Y or N. That is because there weren't enough testers in each individual campus to make that group. But as a district, there were enough, there were more than 25. And sometimes that's kind of tricky to, to, to kind of figure out. No campus had more than 25 individually take the test, but when you combine them all, we had more than 25, and our, uh, we got being on that system safely. Um, and then it breaks it down into campuses. Uh, it just special education, writing at, at the high school, um, writing for our uh, economically disadvantaged and special education, got us and then also on uh, the middle school science and social studies and special, special education. I know that, and I don't know if I'm supposed to talk about this right now, but the reading initiative is going to be part of the, the thing we're doing to help, help, to help in this, this area. We will have to have a, uh, form a team to develop a plan to address these areas and we fully intend to do that to the best of our ability. Anybody, this is this is kind of hard to put your head around. Um, there are some things that they're, they haven't released to us yet that will help me by October or November, whenever we do it, put a, a presentation of the whole thing together. But we wanted to talk we wanted to talk to you about the things that we need to improve on, but on the distinctions, we also wanted to brag on some things. Uh, I thought that we did did, did very well as a district uh, comparative. I looked at all the other Region 20, and uh, out of 685 high school campuses, there were over 100 that didn't, that had to get improvement required. Um, in districts, I think uh, there were like 28 that, did, that had improvement required. So I'm proud of our scores, but there's always areas to improve. And, we have good people in place to, to do that. Do I have any questions that I can answer? Is the data taken? Is it from this past school year? Yes, sir. So it's, yes, sir. Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll go to item. Consider and take action approving sale of Lot 1C, Block B, Railroad Edition, 1020 South 2nd Street, Mooresville, Texas, uh, for less than taxable value. Yes, we, uh, from time to time, our delinquent tax attorneys will bring um, properties that have been put up for sale for non payment of taxes. This usually has to happen over a three to four year period before they get to the point where. They go through the lawsuit process, and then they'll actually do the process of doing the tax sale. We had two properties that um, were put up for tax sale, and although they didn't meet the um, original bid or adjusted value, it was a recommendation to go ahead and take these amounts and get them back on the tax roll where we are collecting property taxes on these two properties. They're two pretty small properties, but um, we have to go formally as the board of that and approve it. So that's what's before you today.
consider annual review of investment policy. This is a um, formal requirement that we have to do each year by our CDA local and legal policies to for the board to review our investment policy. So we really don't have much of an investment policy procedure since there's really so low interest rates. There's not a whole lot we can do, but we have to go through the motions and approve the policy that we're recommending. No change, just the list of certified providers for receipt continuing education. We have to have, have, to have 10 hours every two years, and so does Ms. Smith. So that's approving those sources. And um, that, you know, the basic thing is just showing the minutes that we review these things. So that's really at the, um, in, the in the past when there was some difference when an uh, entity could buy government securities, and there was about a 35 to 40 basis point spread over the pools that it was worth it to look and possibly do that. But now basically the pools are paying the same thing as short term government securities. So our investments are predominantly in either a short term security through logic or through Wells Fargo and Fox Store Bank. We'll look to see who has a better rate at that point in time because most of our investments are under six months. There's no other discussion, Mr. Vice President. I move to approve resolution attached that the Board of Trustees has reviewed and approved the investment policy and investment strategy and changes made during. Moved by Ms. Peggy, a second by Ms. Cho to approve the resolution attached. That the Board of Trustees has reviewed and approved the investment policy and, and investment strategy and changes made therein. Any further discussion? All in favor? Four. Thank you. Yeah. Moved to item 10 appointment of professional development and appraisal system appraisers for the 2013-2014 school year. Ms. Baker. Good evening. I bring to you a recommendation of administrators to uh, serve as appraisers for the 2013-2014 school year for the PDAS Professional Development and Appraisal System. Uh, we do have uh, administrators at each campus as well as central office uh, personnel who would uh, actually uh, appraise in place of a teacher supervisor in accordance with board policy DNA local. Uh, they're all certified, trained, ready to go. consider revisions to board policy DEC local. Okay. As we currently discussed in our small committee meetings, uh, we do have some changes to our DEC local, which is our compensation and benefits, leaves and absences local policy uh, listed uh, in the in your sheet. Uh, the blue, most of that is just wording, just rewording it. TASB recommended some uh, rewording uh, and uh, not really any major changes there. Uh, the changes that we did make, uh, and we had discussed those when we met with each of you in small groups, uh, was talk, uh, we talked about adding back 
the language of non-discretionary use and discretionary use of our state personal leave, and that is on page four of seven. And so that's been added back in. Again, it's TASB language. We didn't really choose the language. It's the way they recommend that it should be in uh, our policy. Uh, we did also include the duration of that leave. If it's for a discretionary use, that uh, it's limited to two consecutive days. So that's per our, our prior discussions. Uh, on page four of seven, the local leave, basically that's just been reworded. We did not change any of the local leave. Uh, we are discussing uh, creating a district um, team uh, committee to discuss some changes to local policy for next year for local leave. But this year we'll keep it as is. Uh, just really just changing the wording a little bit around, but nothing changed as far as how it's, how it's administered. Uh, we did add that uh, in, in board policy to say, in addition, the approval must be obtained from a supervisor before use. So that had already been uh, in the campus handbooks, but it wasn't actually in board policy. So those are our major changes. And there's no motion that needs to be added on this, correct? Yes, this does need to be adopted. Closed session for item 13 consideration and the acquisition and sale of real property and for item 14 personnel Texas government code 551.074 a resignations and retirements be employment of professional contract employees C employment of term contract employees D 2013-2014 personnel needs and E superintendent goals at 732. 